Hi, welcome to the last in this series on VMFX where we look at how to set up VMFX in VM Direct Path mode. Now this video assumes that you're at the stage where you're already running VMFX in emulated mode as I've taken you through in the previous video. Okay, so all the prerequisites um, apply uh, for VMFX in emulated mode. Um, the main differences are that we're now using ESXi 5 hosts. Um, VMFX in VM Direct Path mode with VM Motion is not supported on ESXi 4. So I've done a host upgrade of our two lab hosts. Um, we're going to be setting up a UCS BIOS policy that enables uh, VT on the uh, host blades. And we're going to be setting up a UCS port group uh, that runs in high performance mode. Uh, and then the last uh, thing to do will be to set up a full memory reservation for each of the VMs that we want to be using in um, VMFX, VM Direct Path mode. So as you can see there, the only change from the previous video is that my ESX hosts are now running vSphere 5. Still got my vCenter server running 5 and I've still got my UCS manager running 2.0 code. So just to confirm the point of why we're doing all this, uh, so you can see there the image on the left demonstrates VMFX in emulated mode where we're using the um, hypervisor and the image on the right where you can see that we're using VM direct path mode. We're actually completely bypassing the hypervisor. So you can see the statistics down the bottom there on the sort of a performance increase you'll get in either mode. There's a nice little comparison slide which shows the uh, performance um, statistics that Cisco have tested uh, running against the standard vSwitch compared to emulated mode and VM direct path mode. Uh, a common question is how come you're running VMFX in VM direct path mode doesn't break vMotion? Well the answer is in this slide where as you can see there we've got two VMs which are running in VM direct path mode um, as soon as the vMotion is instigated, the VM in the right there is actually kicked straight back into emulated mode. The vMotion then happens, uh, and once complete, the VM then kicks back into VM direct path mode. So let's get right into installing our ESX5 uh, host into our uh, VMFX DVS. So just as before, we need to install the virtual Ethernet module, the VEM. So we'll just browse to our UCS manager. Go into the VMFX link and I'll just save that. There's numerous ways of getting the VEM onto the ESX host. Uh, you can use VMware Update Manager, you can just right click, copy the link there, and use that. Uh, but I'll use my own uh, normal tried and trusty method of just uh, copying the file down and then doing a secure copy directly to the ESXi 5 host. So if you remember from the previous video, you need to have SSH enabled on the ESXi 5 host for a secure copy to work. So we'll just log in. Okay, so now we'll go and browse and find where we saved that file. So it's in our temp directory, and I'll normally stick it into the slash TMP on the ESXi host. So I'll just drag that across. Okay, so that's fine, so that's in there now. So now I just need to SSH into the ESXi 5 host. Okay, so presently there's no VEM loaded, um, so I can prove that just by having a look. I'll just copy that file for later, so I do a VEM status minus V, so VEM not found. Okay, so, so now this is the difference between ESX I5 and 4, that the ESX update command we used on a 4 host is not 
the way to do it now with a 5 host. So again, that's well documented how to do this on an EXX iPhone host. So we actually use the ESX uh, CLI command. So again, so the principle is pretty much the same though. Okay, so I just referenced that zip file that we've just downloaded. And that should install our Vim. Okay. So I can now just confirm that that Vim is installed. Okay. You see there that 20 VNICs, that's the actual number of dynamic VNIX that I've created in the dynamic VNIC policy on the ESX host. Okay, so that's the procedure done on the ESXi 5 host, so you can log out of that now. So now we want to go into our vCenter and add in our ESXi host into our cluster. So I'll just go ahead and add that host in. So you can see there, they're the two VMs that we were using that are currently both running VMFX in emulated mode. So I'll just add that host in. Okay. Okay, so that host is now in, so I just finished loading and then we'll take it out of maintenance mode. Okay. Okay, so now we're ready to add that host into our DVS. So we're going to our inventory networking. And we'll add host. And I've got a couple of spare VNIX on that host. Now I don't think these VNIX are ever actually used when you're using VM direct path mode, but I think you need to add them in. Uh, one, because I think VMware uh, expects to have them there. But also I found that if you didn't have uplink NIX, that the um, VNIX did not come up. So again, we'll just add those in. So yeah, so currently we're not, our two hosts are currently running in uh, emulated mode. And you can see there that direct path IO is inactive. So now you want to go into our UCS manager. Now we've got a couple of little bits to do here. So the first thing is to create a server um, BIOS policy. So we need to enable uh, virtualization technology or uh, VT on our servers. So we do that by way of a BIOS policy. So under your processor tab there, we need to enable VT. And under Intel Directed I.O., we need to enable uh, all of those points there. So I've created that VMFX underscore BIOS policy and I've associated that with our two ESX hosts by way of this updating template. So under Policies tab there, I'll associate that VMFX BIOS policy, which will automatically update those two ESX hosts. Now that will reboot those two hosts. So the next thing we need to do is go in and create our port profile. So you can see there that our VMs are running in uh, emulated mode. We've got our two VNIX there. So I now need to create a port profile. So I'll call this uh, VM direct path. Never quite know which ones to capitalize and which ones not to, uh, but it just looks funny if you, if you don't do it right. Uh, but I think that's okay. So again, we'll give it a, a fairly concise description. So again, if I wanted to, oops, 
So that's it. Okay, so if, again, if I wanted to associate a particular quas policy, uh, like the one we created earlier, I could do that here. Now, this is the important bit. So network I.O. performance needs to be in high performance mode. Uh, I'm not sure why Cisco didn't call it VM direct path mode. But I guess they didn't know it was going to be called that at that stage. OK, so there's our port profile created. So now we need to create our uh, port profile client, which gets pushed to VMware. So I'll we'll create that. Again, we'll call it something sensible. And where I want to apply it. So I'm going to apply it just particularly to the VMFX DVS we created um, earlier. OK, now that should get pushed through to vCenter. And we'll just have a quick check. I should see this doing something. It is indeed. So I can see there VM direct path. And we have a new port group. OK, so nothing in that port group has yet. So there are our two current VMs. And we can see there those are the port IDs we just saw in uh, UCS Manager. And again, you'll notice there, direct path IO is inactive. So let's now go to our hosts and clusters. And we'll start doing some changes. OK, so we need to go into Edit Settings. And you'll see our uh, adapter there. So you can see there, inactive uh, to direct path. Now that little blue um, information sign, that's, that's, a, that's a great help. That actually tells you why it's inactive. So you can see there it says it's implicitly been deactivated. So there's our uh, direct path port group, which has performance mode enabled. As we know, performance mode equals VM direct path mode. So now if we have a quick look, we'll see what our little information sign is telling us. So we're still inactive, and that is telling us that we have not made a full memory reservation. So again, it's very helpful, that little blue information sign. So let's just go ahead and create a full memory reservation. The fact that you do need a full memory reservation is probably you know, one of the reasons why you, know, you probably don't want to do this on every VM. So the question is, why don't we just do this all the time? So maybe that's one of the reasons why we don't. So now let's go ahead and hopefully it may just need a second to think about it. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, it'll be all right on the night, as they say. Not quite one for Jeremy Beadle. God rest him. No, let's just have another quick look in there. Hopefully, excellent, so we're active. So yeah, it just took a second. Okay, you see our port now has changed to 2140, because we've moved on to a different port group. So again, we'll do exactly the same for our vCenter. Okay, so again, we'll do a 100% memory reservation. And we'll move that onto our VM direct path port group. OK, and you'll see our port will change again. OK, so that's done. So now both of those VMs should be running in VM direct path mode. So hopefully this is active. Again, I think it's going to just take a couple of secs. OK, let's just have another look. Excellent, so we're active. So direct path IO is active. And you see our port group has our port number there has changed. So let's go and have a look at our uh, DVS and just confirm that we're running in VM direct path mode. So you can see our VMs are no long, no longer in the VM network group, and there they are in the VM direct path group. If we have a look at our ports, you'll see that our VM direct path mode is active, and you can see the two port numbers are there: 2140 and 2142 that we saw uh, on the adapter settings. 
So again, we'll be able to reference 